Hello, everybody. This is Purge. Bring you guys a first-person replay commentary. I am so sorry I didn't upload videos the last couple days, but I've been busy at the Summit 3. It is finally over. Uh, it was a pretty fun week. Got to see a lot of friends and hang out a lot. Watched a lot of Dota, so I feel like I learned a lot about the pro scene and a lot about the new patch, at least how top pros play it. So this is my new Orville. I hope you guys like it. It's a little bit uh, overly centered high, but I think it's fine. We can work around it. So, the hero I'm playing today is Tinker. I know I uploaded a Tinker game about four months ago, but I should be able to go a lot more into detail about Tinker than I did last time because I'm doing a replay commentary instead of just showing a stream. When you play Tinker, it takes a lot of focus, so you're not able to really pay that much attention. I'm actually not a very good Tinker, apparently. I feel like I'm okay at the hero, but apparently I have a bad win rate. I played 21 games in Dota 2, and I've got a 42% win rate, which is pretty bad. One of my lowers, actually. I really don't have that many heroes, sub 50% win rate, but he is one of them. So, yeah, apparently yeah, my tinker, tinker is no good. If we look at the hero as a whole, 43% uh, win rate, pretty low overall. 53rd popularity, so about middle of the pack. And if we look at trends... Um, as you go into late game, Tinker becomes stronger and stronger, and her win rate is, or his win rate, is about the same. Pick rate's slightly going up recently, but I don't really think that has any major impact on... Like, it's not too unexpected to see that, I guess. I think it's just a trend. So, if we hop into the game here, uh, we are not playing Obsidian Destroy, we're playing Tinker. I played this game with a bunch of the BTS guys today. I played with Gods, Kpoptosis, Mott, and Dakota. Mott's obviously not on BTS, but... Easier to say the uh, the uh, BTS guys when uh, I was playing with three out of the other the four slots. So Tinker mid is pretty much the way to go. You can sometimes do safe lane Tinker that works as well, but um, it's usually just a bit safer to go mid. The main goal is to get boots to travel very rapidly, and then you abuse that. And the reason that this works is because your ultimate is called rearm, and it's basically a refresher orb. So you can basically continuously refresh all of your other cooldowns. Is how it works. So. So the abuse possibilities for this are really high because, you know, you can rearm something and then cast it and then rearm something and cast it again. And that's where the, the nature of the hero comes. This is why you always need to build boots to travel on this hero. There's no exception for this. You shouldn't build phase boots. You shouldn't build arcane boots. You shouldn't build guardian greaves. You should not simply get any of those items in most cases. Um, yeah, there's pretty much no solution where you're going to want something else. Please, God, don't make treads. Don't make tranquil boots. It is boots of travel. That is where the hero becomes overpowered because then you can basically teleport around the map at, at complete discretion and um, get a lot of kills and participate in fights and be very global. That's what you have to do when you play this hero. It's really important. So uh, when you're playing mid as a tinker, you can generally do pretty good in your mid matchup. Um, that's because your base damage is pretty high. I grabbed a null talisman to start things out. But the other good part is laser. And laser allows you to blind your opponent from last hitting for three seconds. And once you do that, it should give you the guaranteed last hit. But unfortunately, if you're bad like me, you miss a lot of easy last hits that you should grab. So I will be missing a couple of those. Um, to go over his other skills, these are the things that you're going to be rearming a lot. Your first one is called laser. It does pure damage. That's the coolest thing about it. And it's actually a really high damage nuke. It does 80 pure, which after reduction is something like a 100 magic damage nuke or around there. A little bit more than 100 damage. At level 4, it does 320 pure. So this is a really good ability to have if you're worried about countering something like a Huskar. Huskar is very, very resistant to magic damage, so what you do is you get him very low, and then you cast laser on him when his HP is low. That's a good way to kill Huskar, and it also counters Huskar for the fact that um, if he's missing, he can't apply his Burning Spear. So very good ability versus Huskar, very good against anybody that has a pipe, very good against anti-mage for damage. Um, as a whole, you still have to be really careful against anti mage because you have a huge mana pool, generally, with the items that you're buying. If you're trading hits with somebody, casting laser is really good as well. Uh, but laser all around really good skill. It, the cooldown is not extremely low, but it's it's low enough that you can, with 14 second cooldown, you can cast a decent amount. And the hero blind duration apparently goes up as you skill up the points, up to 4.5 seconds. And yeah, pretty good ability. Um, it recently, Tinker's Ags got buffed. Uh, the way that it works is that if you laser somebody, it does a. Uh, causing a laser to refract between all visible enemy units. So basically you can laser everybody in a team fight, which is pretty huge considering that that applies mischance for four and a half seconds. So if your opponents are relying on attacking a lot, it's it's pretty cool to be able to get eggs. Um, I didn't buy it this game because I still think there's so many other items that you can purchase instead, but... But uh, just something to keep in mind. If, if, you do, if you are concerned about blinding people, I think it's definitely an option. 
So here I spent a little bit of time looking at the map. What I should have been doing is immediately going to stack the, the large camp. I completely didn't think about it. But stacking the large camp anticipates you getting gold later. So it's really good to do that. And I did basically nothing for about 30 seconds there. I was just waiting for the new creep wave to come. So whenever you're playing a mid hero that has push ability, what you should do generally, at least is what I like doing, I like to push the wave out, and by doing this, it gives me space. It makes it so I'm pretty much ungankable because I'm standing on my side of the river. Like right now, I'm very gankable. If people swing up around me from the top, they could very easily initiate and very possibly just blow me up. Um, but if I push out the lane instead like this, I can use March of the Machines. Um, that does AoE damage, basically. It'll push out the lane, I can back up, I can stack a large camp, and then I can later get that farm in a different way. So, And not to mention, of course, I've got another rune coming up soon, so it's not too terrible to push here. It's a little early, but it's okay. Um, so you always want to go bottle when you're playing Tinker mid. He definitely needs mana regen, and he definitely benefits from the big mana regen. Again, I could have stacked the large camp, but I was kind of slow. Um, I believe I caught it here. But I should have, I should have been up to three stacks right now. The first camp it's okay if you're a couple seconds late, especially if it's a fast camp. The centaurs are pretty pretty fast. They have 320 movement speed, I believe. If it's something slow like the Dark Troll Warlords, then it gets a little harder. But I'm pretty sure that I ended up stacking. He stole my rune, which is a little obnoxious, so I can't really abuse that either. I actually, had a lot of trouble getting runes in the very early game. <clears throat> As you can see, the Invoker grabbed my DD rune. Definitely hurts things a bit, but I've got boots coming now, and I'm I'm last hitting okay. I'm one of the higher in the game. I mean, I should have probably about five, six, maybe seven more last hits than I do, but I'm doing all right, considering. So the way your second skills, skill works is called Heat Seeking Missile. It shoots out two missiles that hit two enemy units that I, or two enemy heroes that are visible within 2,500 range. So the idea is that you cast Heat Seeking Missile, you rearm, and you cast it again, and you can spread out a lot of AoE magic damage. It's not really AoE, but you can do a lot of magic damage to heroes. And it's pretty close to hitting each with a Dagon, so the skill is very good to spam on your opponents, if you have the mana pool for it, that is. The range is really high, 2,500 range is huge. Your attack range is about 600, so you're talking about like four times that, basically. And it doesn't really matter where they are. The other cool part is that Heat Seeking Missile doesn't really have a cast animation, so you can just throw it out there to get things started. Your third skill is what you use mainly to farm. It's called March of the Machines. You cast it in a direction, and the wave will spawn away from where you cast it, but moving in that direction, and they, crawl, they create a wave. And as every single one hits, it does AoE magic damage. <coughs> Excuse me. The AoE magic damage is pretty small. I don't know if it says what it is, but... Um... Doesn't really say what the AoE of the the march explosion is, but it's very small. The mar the the march basically hits you or units directly next to you. So usually this works pretty good on creep waves. The way to cast it though is you don't want to cast it towards the creep wave. So when the creep wave meets, it usually makes kind of a, a flat line shape, but you'll see, see in a second here. See how the creeps are making a line from the upper left to the bottom right? Well, you want to cast the march perpendicular to the direction that they're moving, because then it hits the range creep as well as the melee. If you cast it the other way, it'll kill the melee creeps, and the range creep will generally live. So you just usually want to cast it sideways. Make sure you do that. I did get a rune here for once, which is pretty nice. It's an induced rune. I could use that for ganking, but because of the skill points I put in, March of the Machines is not a very good ganking skill. It's much better for just farming. So if I had more levels in Laser and Missile, you can go ganking. And you can do that build if you're playing Tinker. If you're playing them at a low level, I think that build's probably smarter, but... If you do get a lot of early levels of March of the Machine, it better guarantees that you're able to get a lot of last hits. I should have casted March here, I think. His attack ended up getting me and breaking my, my bottle charge there. I probably should have casted March as I went high ground, because as he retreated, he would have taken that magic damage. Now, this used to be universal, which means that it, it does damage through magic immunity, like Black King Bars, and it did damage to Ancients, but it got nerfed recently, because Tinker was too good. Um, he maybe got a little over-nerfed, but they also nerfed E-Blade, which I think kind of needed to get nerfed because it was too good on heroes like Tinker and Morphling. Um, and the, the March of the Machines nerf also hurt him a little bit. And to make matters a bit worse, jungle lane's a little hard for him right now. Well, it's not hard, but jungle camps give a little bit less experience in gold than they did before. Um, on the bright side, though, you can now damage Mud Golems with your March of the Machines in the past. That didn't do damage to them, but now it does, like... 30% damage or whatever. I just decided to walk down here to check to see if the rune was still there since they did have two heroes top. I thought there's a chance we'd have a rune bot 
and then I would have a bit more mana to work with, but I, again, I get a bit unlucky here. And thus far, I've only been able to get one bottle charge, but it's not the worst thing in the world because I am just kind of farming mid and doing okay at it. Like, the Tinker basically can't really dive me safely. He did deny one of my creeps there, but I got the other one. And I have time to go do an, another stack now. So, 40 CS at about 8 minutes. This is pretty good. I have way more than Invoker does. This is mostly just because he's left the lane a couple times. And because I have an AoE and he's relying entirely on his right click. Usually if I'm just re relying on my right click on a hero, I'll usually mess up a couple times. But I believe I stack that again. I'm not sure. Um, that one was a little bit of a bad angle. And that rain, that uh, Wildkin creep attacked me a little bit. But should provide for a stack. And again, I'm mostly just trying to get BOTs. Normally I would stand there and let the march hit. I kind of lowered the chance of that working, but um, I wanted to go get the rune on the bot. The bot spot and Shadow Demon was going to contest me there, so. Disrupted me, not really big threat as long as Shadow Demon's not 6. There's pretty much no way he can kill me. He's actually 5, so he's leveling really well right now. Uh, but luckily he didn't have his ultimate. I probably would have died there. Maybe not died, but there's a real chance that I would have gotten killed. I thought there was a chance that that was one of the real ones, so I ran away from it. Now, I kind of wanted to get the experience from these creeps, but in the same vein, I didn't want Invoker to chase me. I was a bit of a precarious position. Instead, I opted to move into the jungle and start my stack again. I wanted to see how much damage I could do with just one march. Uh, normally, it takes at least two to clear a camp, especially large camp like this. So I decided to attack this and pull it through the wave. It does end up killing a lot of the small creeps, but that's really all it does. Some of those creeps got really small, or really low, but I didn't quite have the damage for it. So I think I wasted way too much time here standing around. Instead, I should have probably just stacked it and moved to heal, or stacked it and moved back to mid lane. And I ended up clearing out the skeleton, but that probably wasn't really worth my time, to be honest. It would have been better if I just stacked it and ran back to base to heal. Because now I've spent an extra, what, 20 seconds out of the base, and what did I accomplish? All I accomplished was... Um, killing two skeletons that was like what 20 gold i could have been sitting min got one last thing got the equal amount so that was really inefficient and it drastically delayed my bot's and it really shouldn't have going uh, making that decision was just terrible so i buy a tp to tp the mid lane because i want to get back into farming this if possible what i probably should have done is bottled um a little bit earlier here i should have gotten that last hit as well but I should have bottled as I casted my march. I think that would have been the right move. On the bright side, I can now jungle jungle this a little bit. I'm mean, gonna have to use bottle charges for it, but or maybe I don't. One march looks like it's doing it, and that gets me my BOTs. So just a little bit of stacking after you push waves is the correct way to do this. And again, this applies to any mid hero that has an AOE. Death Prophet, you could do it on Beastmaster, you could do it on anybody that has kind of a spam only. Death Prophet's a really good example, Leshrac is a really good example. Any mid hero that has decent mana pool, that has a bottle, spam out mid, go stack, go back to mid, rinse, repeat. You might miss one or two last hits if you do this, because eventually the creeps will meet, but you'll be able to catch up in the jungle really rapidly. So that got me my BOTs. And now I can basically rearm whenever I want and TP anywhere on the map, so. Uh, next item, you definitely want a soul ring. Some pro players will generally get soul ring before they even get their BOTs because they can farm in jungle a lot faster. As you notice in the jungle, I couldn't rearm that many times before I was completely out of mana. Um, some pro players uh, will get rearm at 6, but most will wait at least until they have 4 levels of March the Machines. Regardless, my levels are coming out pretty well, considering I haven't gotten a single kill yet. I'm pretty happy with where I'm sitting at. And I'm just going to TP back to base to get more mana at this point. Rearming here in case I can get the kill on the Alchemist, but he is very, very dead. So instead I'll just teleport down here to make sure that he doesn't get to do any free damage to the tower. So I'll just cast the March of the Machines, rearm up here. If nobody's in the area, it's totally fine for you to farm it. And that's one thing to really keep in mind when you're playing Tinker. A lot of Tinker players play Tinker very similar to how most people will play Nature's Prophet, is, and that's that they'll cast their ultimate whenever they can. It's completely the wrong way to do it. You want to farm places where your teammates are not. If you show up to their lanes and you farm their lanes, you're going to push them, and it's going to make it harder for them to get last hits, and that's a really bad thing to do. Now, our, we found out that Alchemist had a Battle Fury here. So I decided to move into the jungle to try to take some of his camps because the creeps just respawned. And I felt like I could probably get away with this. I think it was pretty dangerous to do this, especially I showed myself on the Alchemist just now. I saw that he was doing uh, Acid Spray over here. 
it's a really high chance that he got those creeps and not me, so I just decided to run away. And then I found a Shadow Demon who disrupted me. I probably should have ran up instead of left. Uh, running left wasn't very likely to save me. Um, really didn't accomplish a whole lot other than dying. So that was a pretty bad mistake, I think. And it looks kind of like that OD is going to live. Oh, I remember this moment. Wasn't really sure what what uh, Kapoptosis was doing there. But I think he was trying to double edge off the creeps or something like that. And then the OD whiffed his ult as well. That was pretty funny. Just like a good like <laughs> 20 seconds of fails there. So eventually respawning. I definitely should have played that a lot safer. Usually when you don't have any items yet, you can't really play that aggressive. Fortunately, the uh, Sunstrike does both. Obviously, I don't know if that was going to come or not. But I could have bottled him up a little bit more, but I wasn't really anticipating him dying. He also had three Shadow, poison, uh, shadow Poisons on him, so it was a pretty high chance of him just getting blown up there. But there's nobody bottom, so usually what you want to do is you want to go to lanes that are pushing, you cast two March of the Machines, and then you teleport out. But you have to be really careful where you cast Rearm, because it gives your opponents a really good chance of just stunning you. And if you do get stunned while you're casting that, it cancels your Rearm, and you've wasted a lot of mana, because Rearm is very mana expensive. You have to be very careful with it. When there are fights, though, I usually want to show up if possible, at least in the early game, if I can do it safely from a creep wave. I kind of wanted to hit this tower to burst it down, but with that Shadow Poison, I have to be pretty worried. Luckily, I'm relatively fast by having my... Uh, I should have just TP'd back. I don't, I don't know what I did. That was, that was pretty inefficient there. I, I didn't bank for my mana, so I ended up running out. And because I ran out, now I have to walk back to base, or at least walk, walk most of the way back to base. I could have been back in the lane already by now if I didn't make that inefficiency play. So, a couple of things that I'm not doing correctly on Tinker, but everything worked out a lot better later. Um, the really important thing to do when you're playing this here, though, is get your patterns down. And that, what I mean by that is put your hockeys, put your items on the same hockeys and never change them. I think it's very important to put your Soul Ring and your BOTs on hockeys you don't like, because they're not as important to have a crucial click. I put my Soul Ring here on my mouse button, and I put my boot, uh, BOTs on Alt-E, and I, I felt like that was an okay way to do this. <clears throat> Gods got blown up here. I kept wanting to TP to heroes, and you can do that now, but it doesn't quite work the same. Well, you have to buy the the BOTs. Basically. Unfortunately, most of, most of my missiles, both of my missiles, have the illusions. That was really unfortunate. Clean up the alchemist here, and I'm just gonna bottle up mod a little bit in case he gets sun striked. A bit of a nice thing you can do, especially if I'm TPing back to base, which I am. I'm gonna rearm here and try to fight top. I kind of wanted to go there, but I didn't really see myself getting close enough. Say so you can buy BOTs that let you TP to allied heroes now, but it costs an extra two thousand, and that's all that it changes. So it's kind of a bad. It's a it's a bad investment in the early game in almost all cases. Uh, we saw the shadow demon going there. I think Gods was coming over. He did have a blink dagger. I'm just going to cast the march so that it ends up crossing over and hitting him. And a pretty easy cleanup. Got a little bit of march damage here. And I'm going to continue farming the jungle if possible, but Invoker sees me and I have to be pretty careful. a nice arrow. And now I can just TP back home. That's a really good spot to hide right there. People from the left won't be able to see you. I 
So that was alright. We ended up killing Shadow Demon. I stole some stacks here, and I can TP back to the bot lane. Once I get a Blink Dagger, things get a lot less scary, and I honestly should have one by now, but my farm rate hasn't really been that amazing. I spent a lot more time going for kills than I have been um, just simply farming, and that's not necessarily a good thing. But luckily, we have a pretty good lineup for fighting. Um, with a Centaur and a Slark with a Blink Dagger, we can actually do a lot in the early game, which is part of the reason that I eventually um, decided to upgrade my BOTs pretty rapidly, because I can TP on the Slark who's about to initiate with a Pounce, I can TP in on a Centaur, just options, you know. I probably should have casted March here first, that would have been better. So I basically missiled, rearmed to cast March, and then rearmed to cast Missile a second time. I could have saved myself with one rearm there. Thinking about how you use your skills is pretty important, basically. But again, rearming, TPing back to the mid lane. Actually, I'm going to go defend bottom because the Alchemist is pushing. And this is what you want to start doing once you get Blink Digger. As soon as you TP in, you have to hold shift and queue up your Blink to TP into the trees. And then before you, after you rearm and you're about to TP again, you Blink into a further place and then you teleport out. And by doing that, it makes it really hard for your opponents to kill you. There are some heroes that can counter that, like Zeus, for example, or Storm is really good against it, or maybe even Nature's Prophet can sometimes catch you. Heroes that basically have jumps and flying vision. Batrider is a really good hero against Tinker because he can find you in the trees pretty easily. But once I have Blink, I can start doing good stuff like that, which is basically Blink on top of my opponents, cast Missile and Laser, and do some burst damage that they're maybe not expecting. And because they do have a couple of squishy heroes, this works really nice. And to make that a little better, I even have Laser, which is very good against Alchemist, because a lot of his damage does end up being right clicks. So, some stuff going on mid doesn't look too good. Kind of thinking about showing up here, but it doesn't quite look like it's going to go well. I end up TPing anyways. And bottling up the caudle a little bit. Again, I wasted a little bit too much time. I think if I was playing Tinker at a higher level, what I would be doing is farming a little bit more rapidly. I keep showing up to team fights when I probably should just be farming instead. So I have a hundred I have a hundred CS at about 20 minutes, which is a little low, but it's still pretty good. For me it's pretty good. See the mud golems are actually taking some damage, which is kinda nice. Normally that normally that uh, creep there gives hundred gold, now it's giving about seventy-eight to eighty. So a little bit of a nerf there. And I was thinking about going to the top lane. So I think I think I told gods I was on the way. Or maybe I didn't. As if I wasn't slippery enough already. I should have casted the march, I think. We were able to kill him here. Invoker showed up, but... just now. Oh, Alchemist got an egg. So I, I didn't even realize he bought one. I don't even know who he gave that to. Oh, I think he gave it to the OD. That all makes sense now. Makes a lot of sense. I was not tracking items very well. So basically how you do the team fight is you cast your missile and your laser, and then you run away and you rearm, and then you blink forward and cast your laser and your missile, and then you do that again until you're out of mana, and then you go back to base to heal, you spam bottle to heal up fast, and then you come back into the fight again. That is how you do it. So after getting your blink, you have you're basically a much much stronger hero. It's kind of funny to think that some tinkers in the past used to not get blink, but there's so many items that you can buy in this hero. Basically anything that has a cooldown is an item that you can easily abuse on tinker. Um, Glimmer cape is a good example. It does cost 130 mana, but you can basically make yourself permanent this as long as you continue to um, cast it every five seconds you're mostly invisible for the entire rest of the game, so that's pretty cool. I was hoping that he would be able to hit him with the arrow here. If he did hit with the arrow, we would have killed, because I had a level 3 laser and a couple of right clicks and a missile. But didn't get him, it's okay. Um, every time that you're about to rearm, though, it's important that you soul ring, and that's why soul ring is so big, because it's basically like, it cancels out 150 of the mana that you use every time that you cast your spell. 
that every time you cast rearm. So soaring is extremely crucial. If not for soaring, like think about it. How many times do I rearm every team fight? I'm rearming at least like four times. Every time I rearm, I get 150 more mana. So basically, you're giving yourself an extra 600 mana at least for 800 gold, and it scales throughout the whole game. And it also builds into Bloodstone, which as of late has been the Tinker build. And for a very good reason, actually. Um, I bought the upgraded boots of travel here. I would argue this wasn't worth it. Um, but I kind of wanted to try it out to see if it was good. If I think if I was recommending for you guys a build, I would say don't buy it. I messed up here with my blink. I didn't shift Q it correctly. If I was you guys, I would not do this build. Because it's very... Uh, it has to pay off, right? The reason I bought this is because a, a centaur can set up a lot of kills, and I'd like to be able to be there no matter where the fight is. And if I do that, it should allow my team to snowball pretty hard, at least if my opponents are solo. So if the if the centaur was setting up a lot of ganks, I think it would be really useful to to have the boots early. Although in the same vein, I could already have a Dagon, or I could start be working. I could already be working more seriously on my bloodstone. Unfortunately, we did not get the tower here. Trying to save him here, but unfortunately took a bit too much damage. Radiance top tower is under attack. It's a nice arrow by Mont. Stop the alchemist from going anywhere. What I should have spent the money on was some HP items like a point booster. The reason Bloodstone is such a good item for two reasons. Uh, first of all, it gives you a ton of mana regen, which is what you need as a tinker to continue to stay out of the map. Uh, mana is very, very good. Two waves, blink back and TP home. Don't worry about the experience too much, you'll get it other ways. Other ways. Um, at least on some of those dangerous waves, it's totally oh, fine. If, totally fine if you don't do that. Here's another hero that I'm happy to TP to it's the Slark. So we can dive on top of people. Now, Alchemist isn't really a hero that I'm going to be able to get. blown up pretty hard there. Well, that was a pretty good fight. Um, had a lot of mana to go through, was able to TP to the Slark, so they weren't able to see me coming. That's one of the cool things about the boots, is that I can just show up on top of my allies. And uh, it's, I think it's definitely a core item for Tinker eventually, but I don't think it's something you should be getting in the early game in most cases. And again, as most Tinkers in the early game will do, they will go for a uh, Bloodstone first, uh, at least very fast after the blink. Always go Soul Ring, into eggs or soaring into BOTs sometimes before or after the the BOTs. I've seen a lot of pros go soaring first, but if you're doing really really well, maybe you should go BOTs first. I'm not quite sure. Depends on your build as well. If you're if you want to battle early, it might be better just to go BOTs as fast as possible. That way you can laser and missile in every single team fight pretty much. Just make sure I finish everything off here. But this game I went Boots of Travel, into the upgraded Boots of Travel, into a Dagon, into a Bloodstone, and I think that was just the wrong order. What I should have done, I, if I really wanted to get the double Boots of Travel, I could, I guess, but I don't think I got value out of it. It would have been much better if I ended up going for regular Boots of Travel, into Bloodstone, into Dagon, into double upgraded Boots of Travel. I think that would have been much better. So one other important thing I'm doing here is I'm farming the two camps that Coddle guy is not killing as Coddle. Much, very important that I'm doing that because I don't want to interrupt his farm. I don't want to make him walking into the space be a waste of time. Um, we also split experience on that, which is fine. And then I'm going to go jungle the other two camps over here, which I'm very happy to do. Um, might be able to kill an OD, actually. A little bit of laser. I tried to rearm, but he ended up banishing me. And he did force staff through into the trees, so. This guy very much liked to type well to queue up good game well played in the chat. I realized that going to that fight was probably not going to work out, so I opted to not go to that fight. Instead, I can TP the bot lane, push that out a bit. It's kind of a dangerous place, anyways. It's kind of scary for me to stand here, actually. Very high chance of them coming to kill. But once I cast the two marches, it works out just fine. So there's my Dagon. That was a pretty dangerous blink. Um, if they're good players, they could definitely set up for that. Only got one creep out of that double wave, but it's okay. 
I slowed the push down a bit. And since I can see a bunch of heroes mid and there was a hero top, it's pretty safe for me to farm bottom instead. So reading where, I, where my opponents are is really important. Now my blinks are honestly not very safe. I wouldn't really look into my blinks too much about like, oh, this is the safe place to blink to. A lot of the times I just kind of like towards the trees. There's much better, like amazingly better Tinker players than me because he has so many actions basically. Every time you rearm, you can cast up to six spells, right? Or six items, so not to mention your, your three actives in your ultimate, so... Like, you can play Tinker really fast, and because you can... The sky is basically the limit. Like, you can teleport around the map as soon as you're rearmed. You know, you can cast all of your abilities. You can, like, chain hex. Like, you can, like, hex and yules two different people. It's just, like, there's so many things you can do as Tinker that are really incredible, that are, are very difficult to pull off. So, um, this, this video should give you a general idea of how to play Tinker the right way, but I don't think it's, like... An amazing game or anything else but this is perfect use of the bot's i can tp on top of the heroes we can initiate hopefully and we're able to kill the hero shoot out the missiles when you can that's definitely not a hero that we can kill very easily At this point, I just casted the... It's always good if you're retreating to cast March of the Machines. Regen is really OP on this hero, though. It's kind of similar to Storm, because I can basically continuously get rearms going. So I'm just going to sit down here. going to cast out my missiles when I can. Luckily, Soaring does not cancel my regen. One missile and a Dagon I was able to grab that kill there. I'm almost out of regen. Missile ended up getting the right one, which is kind of nice. They never miss. Again, rearm. And we blow them up. I think I did that part really well. Um, that was one part of the game that I was very proud of, that I was able to um, play around the regen that well. It was such a good rune to have there. But I basically got to rearm, do rearm combos like eight times or something like that. So you see why Bloodstone's so good? Like, with a regen, obviously it. A bloodstone isn't the same as what a as what the other item does, but man, we really almost got him here. I wonder if I should have cast March the other way. Probably would have been smarter. We almost got him, but he he juked the March. I knew the March was the only way that I was gonna be able to kill him because it requires the target. So, so I tried it. Um, one good thing about the Dagon, though, Dyer's is that is well, it doesn't give me as much mana as the Bloodstone does. It does allow me to kill in the early game, and I have been able to use it like that. I, I was kind of a dick here by coming to this lane and farming instead of letting gods, but I honestly didn't see that he was coming there. That was just bad map poorness. So, buy my point booster, building towards Bloodstone. Um, the other really good thing about Bloodstone is that if your opponents do end up catching you finally, you're kind of like a really hard to kill squirrely hero. If your opponents do end up catching you, what you can do is you can suicide. And then you can, as soon as you revive, you can rearm and cast that again. And that's really important as a tinker because you do essentially become a carry. And to make that even stronger, if you're never dead, then you definitely are going to carry for your team. And by suiciding or having a bloodstone and all, you're going to mean a lot of kills just because I have so much nuke damage. And with those extra kills, you get souls. And with all those souls, you respawn really fast. So even if you do get killed or you suicide, you respawn very rapidly. That allows you to be in a lot of fights. And uh, I don't know what this is about. So the Bloodstone basically gives you tons of mana, it lets you respawn really fast, you can suicide if you get it in trouble. You can essentially repeatedly suicide when you're playing Tinker because of uh, the way, because of being able to rearm Bloodstone. So um, it's really abusive, it allows you to huge kill streaks, if you're not chain stunned you're pretty much set. So one really big counter to Tinker though is something like Doom, Silences are really good, Storm Spirits are really good hero against Tinker. Um, all those things make it very much harder to play the hero, but I've got my soul booster now, so this gives me a much bigger mana pool, much bigger HP pool, and we see the alchemist, but again, just shift Q and not blinks, I don't want to get caught. Is that clean? Oh, that's right, that was the the alchemist, or the uh, centaur eggs, that's why I was breaking trees there. Go 
ghost walked pretty fast there. And I usually do the laser first and then cast the Dagon. If you cast the Dagon first and then they get away, then your Dagon is wasted. You want to cast both to kill in most cases, otherwise it's not going to work. So the Dagon's the instant cast, the laser has an animation, so you always cast the laser first. In almost all cases, just cast the laser first and then you're good. I cast the three marches there just because I wanted to guarantee that I could farm it. That's one of the best places to farm mutuals because you get three camps. Got my bloodstone now. Give bought a little bit of mana here as I go back to base. Um, I was a little unsure about whether to get another Soul Ring this game. Um, I think it's worth it though. I mean, I already talked about why it's so good. Every time I rearm, I get an extra 150 mana. Um, I thought that I didn't almost didn't want to buy it because it kind of feels like a waste, but it's honestly not a waste. If we think about how many rearms that I get, it's it's really going to pay off big time. If you look at how many casts I got here, I'm only getting about four rearm casts in total without the VOTs, so or without the soul ring. So at this point I was like, alright, I am like running out of mana so much faster than I was before, so. Unfortunately. Got ulti by Shadow Demon, but it's no big deal. See how big of a difference it makes just to be in all the early fights. The the boots of travel, they make a huge difference. We have a pretty good team fight lineup as well, which is maybe why things aren't super fair. And everybody tried pretty hard this game. We got good items, blink on Slark, we have a centaur with a blink. I was able to support people a lot in the kills, all that good stuff. I picked up the bottle here so that I could give gods a full bottle. It's a way to it's a bottle abuse basically. If somebody's getting fountain regen, it refills bottles basically. So by TPing back in and picking up his bottle, it allowed us to have two full bottles instead of just one. And then I'm very happy, of course, to um, give my bottle charges to other people because I can very easily go back to base and refill mine anyways. So since they have so many dead heroes, we're in a really good spot. Now you usually want to max out your Dagon. Um, if they do have a good physical damage counter against you, like Life Stealer or Phantom Assassin or Storm Spirit or something like that, you'll almost always need a Ghost Scepter. But this is kind of like the perfect game for a Tinker. You really don't have to worry about... That was pretty funny. He uh, blinding lighted the OD away, which resulted in the Centaur Stomp not hitting. So a bit of a mistake there by... By Cuddle Guy. Radiance Middle Tower is under attack. Really wanted to kill that courier, but by the sun. I think I could have lived there actually, but I ended up suiciding. So, didn't die? Well, I died. But they didn't kill me, which is the important part, right? And I'm back alive, which is pretty cool. Just bottling a mod a little bit here. That rearms my bloodstone, I can suicide again. Kill these neutral camps while we're waiting. And it turns out they're pretty much not there. That was kind of a little weird. Got the ogre camp, I guess, but... I messed up my shift queue again there, but he used his force staff, that was kind of cool. We did it, guys. Force staff down.
I did get my Ryom up here. Luckily, God's is a moon shard. means he attacks ridiculously fast. I don't even know how much agility he stole, but it's probably a stupid amount. Let's go check. In a second. Alright, God's died for that, but it was totally worth it. Easily worth it. Oh man, we need to see how many stats yet. Let's go back. Hundred and fourteen agility. That's like ridiculous. Let's let's get that. So at this point in the game, when they don't have very many stuns and they don't have a very good counter, they need a way to jump on top of me. It becomes very easy to play Tinker. You see a squishy here, you blink four, you laser missile dag on. If you can do those combos, then you're in a good spot. Even like a very tanky hero like Alchemist is still pretty vulnerable to what I'm able to do. It costs me a lot of mana to do that, but you know, it's fine. There's not a whole lot that I can do to lose at this point, um, to, be, to be honest. Um, E-Blade is definitely the pickup that you normally grab in this position, because it allows you to continuously hex your opponent. You can hex somebody for three and a half seconds, you can rearm, and then you can hex them again for three and a half seconds. So what makes Tinker one of the best anti-carries in the game is that if they don't have their BKB up, you can basically continue, continuously hex them. If they do have their BKB up, you can blink and then hex them, <laughs> and then chain hex them until they die, basically. It's really good. Laser is very good against Roche as well because it perma blinds him. Four and a half seconds here. Pure damage is also very good. I think that does full damage to Alton, or to uh, Roshan. I'm not completely sure about that one. Though. I know he has something like 80% magic resistance. It's really high. Magic nukes on Roche is not very good. The physical damage is definitely the way to go. But that should be my level 5 Dagon. I noticed that Cardle guy was recalling me there. He started doing this at the stage of the game, which is fine, because it would save me a bit of time to TP. So, no big deal there. Radiant structures are fortified. Well, he did it, guys. He used his combo on us, but I don't think it really mattered that much. It's part of the thing that what that was what the alchemist was doing. If we look at items, I assume he has, yeah, he just has refresher with the Midas. It really doesn't do enough if that's all he's got. He needed, he needed another big end item. I don't really have a big end item to be honest, but they were so far behind there that beating us was very unlikely. Even a lot of our heroes have some end items picked up. Uh, Ags, for example. Another Ags with a Soul Booster, we just have a bunch of really Radiant's good items. Middle tower is under attack. So. Fortunately for me, it's probably not tower does damage. What I should have had there is a Ghost Hunter. Ghost Hunter would win rate. So the tower doesn't hit you. Have my missiles. So, could have definitely used a ghost scepter. It would have been a bad item to have against alchemists and stuff like that, but. That's a good example of a Tinker just kind of rolling over the game. That's what you should be doing every time you play Tinker. Not that the guys I played against were that amazing, or not that I'm that good of a Tinker, but if you're not playing Tinker at least as good as this, and you're not playing Tinker anywhere near correctly, 
Um, I watched No Tail play a game at the Summit 3 and she went uh, Glimmer Cape, and it looked really nice because they actually did have some nukes that were good against them, but most importantly, it just allows you to be invisible in addition to you being able to blink from tree to tree. So it's a pretty cheap item, only costs about 2,000 gold, gives you 20% magic resistance, gives you a little bit of attack speed. And obviously, it costs an item slot, but eventually you can swap that out for a different item if you need it. So if it's a bit more of a scary game and you're getting ganked a lot, I think Glimmer Cape might be a really good pickup to get on Tinker. So consider that as well. There's basically every active, uh, very pretty much every um, item that has a cooldown you can use, uh, except for Refresher. That's the only one that's not worth it at all. Um, even Abyssal Blade, if you really want to get a two-second stun with 100 damage, you can do Abyssal Blade. So that is Tinker. I hope you guys learned a lot. And uh, go try Tinker on your pubs. I will be back tomorrow with another video. Thanks for watching. Bye.